so welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Christy Post. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for the Finger Lakes Trail Conference. Um, thank you for being here tonight for our FLT Connect event, navigating the, F the Finger Lakes Trail, um, which is an overview of our map resources and map tools. And we have our two mapping experts with us tonight who are going to be sharing all of their expertise and their wisdom and knowledge and everything with you. Um, so before we even get started, I just wanna say first that, that Roger uh, Hopkins and Scott Geiger are your two presenters tonight and they are both volunteers with the Finger Lakes Trail Conference. Roger actually created the free interactive map and continues to manage the free interactive map that lives on our website. And so it's the most popular uh, page on our website. So most of you have probably already used it for in one way or another. Um, it is an amazing tool. It is the envy of a lot of other trail organizations, and we are really fortunate to have it. And we're really fortunate to have Roger here tonight to share with you how to use it. Um, Scott is uh, another board member, and he's our, our IT person. We are a volunteer-driven organization, so I'm one of two full-time paid staff people. Um, our IT is volunteer, and our IT is Scott. So if we get hacked on our website, we call Scott. If we have problems getting into a page, we call Scott. And Scott is always very responsive. And I, I can't tell you how much time uh, both of these two uh, men give to the organization and how very grateful we are. Um, so the, the FLTC is a volunteer driven organization and we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, we are funded almost entirely by membership dues and donations. So if you're a member, give a wave um, and let me say thank you for your membership and your support of the Finger Lakes Trail Conference. We literally couldn't do what we do without your support. Um, and your fund, your, your donations, your membership dues fund literally everything we do from trail maintenance to some of the behind the scenes IT stuff, um, to these events, to our hiking events, uh, the county hike series, our fall weekend event, everything. Um, so if you're not a member, I hope you'll consider becoming one. Um, you can do so on our website. Um, just a quick note, just before we get started, because we do have a lot to cover, but I do want to mention that this is our 60th anniversary year. The Finger Lakes Trail was founded in 1962. Um, and so we have a couple of ways you can celebrate with us this year. Um, the first is our FLT 60 challenge, which is our hiking challenge. Hike 60 miles anywhere on the Finger Lakes Trail this year and you'll earn yourself a certificate and a patch. It's a good way to get out and explore. It's a free challenge. You can sign up on the website. Um, another way is that our fall weekend celebration in September in Ithaca, it's going to be held at the Grey Haven Motel, which is an old, uh, recently lovingly renovated roadside motel. Um, it's actually on 11 acres and backs up to the Finger Lakes Trail, and it's located just minutes from the trailhead at Robert H. Truman State Park. Um, so that's September 16, 17, and 18. It's a weekend full of hiking and good food and good company with uh, Finger, the Finger Lakes Trail community. Um, so you will be receiving and seeing more information about that. Um, we're actually getting all the details sort of hammered out right now. Um, but mark your calendar and plan to attend that if you can. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Roger and Scott. I think that Roger is going to start us off. Um, and I think he's going to share his screen. I will say um, you are muted. Please stay muted. Um, if you have questions, put them in the chat. I will be monitoring the chat throughout. I think that probably Scott will keep an eye on it as well. Um, and Roger might too, we'll, we'll try to catch all of your questions in the chat and there will be time for questions at the end of the presentation. So I think I covered everything that I need to cover. So Roger, take it away. Thanks, Christy. I'm going to share my screen, I hope. How'd I do? You did it. Great. And I'm, making, right. I'm making the sidebar as small as I possibly can. Hopefully Great. everyone can see your screen okay. Great, thanks Christy. Okay, we're going to talk about the maps of the Finger Lakes Trail. Um, for, for those of you, uh, I, I, I'm hoping that many of you are, are already familiar with some of our maps, but for those of you who aren't, I hope uh, that this, this is really a worthwhile uh, presentation for you. But this is a quick snapshot of the system that's the FLT system that's covered by our maps. Uh, currently, this total system uh, amounts to a little over a thousand miles of hiking trails open to the public and supported by a nonprofit organization. So it's, it's really pretty cool. We connect with uh, the neighboring 
long distance trails. Uh, it, you can start hiking on the Finger Lakes Trail and get to North Dakota on the, on the North Country Trail. You can get to Albany or New York City on the, uh, the Long Path. You can get to Alabama on the Great Eastern Trail and you can get to the uh, uh, Tobermory Peninsula up in Lake Huron from the Bruce Trail. Uh, so this is the scale of what we, we have in our little uh, Finger Lakes trail system. We're going to talk about FLT maps. We'll talk about our interactive maps, uh, which is what you see on the website. And if you have internet connections, you can also see it on your portable device. <clears throat> We will talk about our paper maps. We offer a complete set of paper maps and map sets. So you can buy one or two maps or you can buy a set of all 66 maps. We also sell digital download files that you can put on your device and then you can use them either at home or in the field. So we'll spend uh, some time talking about the interactive map and, and how to get the most out of it. Uh, then we'll uh, explain the difference between the paper and the digital download maps and how to get them. And uh, I'm going to spend a moment on trail condition notices, which are one of the two, the mapping and the trail condition notices uh, are the two ends of the teeter-totter that will keep you in balance on the Finger Lakes Trail. So knowing where the trail is, is the map's job, and then knowing what to expect on the trail is the trail condition notices job. Uh, Scott will come in and uh, who spends a lot more time outdoors than I do <laughs> and uh, uh, talk about using our maps on, on your uh, smartphone or other device while you're in the field hiking. And then we'll leave some time at the end for questions. So I'm going to close this, I think and go to my browser. Oops, I have to interrupt this presentation for some recently breaking news. This is a picture of what's called Bell Station. It's this, this whole section in here. And it's a piece of land that is the largest privately held undeveloped land, shoreline land in the entire Finger Lakes region. And it's just been purchased by the Finger Lakes Land Trust, our good partner through whom several of their preserves, the Finger Lakes Trail passes. And they've been uh, uh, just an uh, indispensable partner in helping us uh, uh, support the trails uh, statewide. Uh, so this is a great day for them. It's been almost 10 years in the making with the, uh, uh, the whole citizen community around Cayuga Lake and, uh, and the Land Trust. <clears throat> So uh, we're, we're pretty happy of that, but enough of that. Uh, do go to the Finger Lakes Land Trust website and you can find lots more information on that. But I'm going to go to the Finger Lakes Trail website and I hope you all know the uh, URL for that, fingerlakestrail.org. I'm going to go to the Go Hiking menu and click on FLT Interactive Maps. We offer uh, the interactive map in four segments. This is the uh, Allegheny region, the Western Finger Lakes region, the Eastern Finger Lakes region, and the Catskills region. So you can go to any one of those regions, or in a moment, I'll show you how to get to the whole thing at once. But I'm gonna to go to the uh, Finger Lakes Trail region. These arrows here will get you to the adjacent regions. So I'm now in the Catskills back to the Finger Lakes East, this is Finger Lakes West, and so on. <clears throat> we can uh, zoom in using this uh, control up here. Whoops, sorry. I'll try to remember to do this. Uh, I can zoom in. And when you do zoom in, you'll begin to see a lot more detail. And so I'm gonna spend a few moments explaining detail and you can zoom back out. You can grab the map and move it around if you like, especially when you're, you're zoomed in. 
you'll want to be able to locate where you are or where you're interested in. And uh, if, if you do uh, uh, scroll or pan on the, uh, using the website page, you're, you're doing the whole website page. So if you want to move just the map, uh, just grab it here with your mouse and hold the mouse button down while you drag it. What I do if I'm going to be spending a little bit of time on the map is I go to the full window and that's this button up here. And that will, that will, I'm now off the website and now looking just at the map. And so now I can, I can scan, I can pan and zoom uh, a little more easily. I'm going to zoom into an area that I know pretty well. Which is, uh, which is here in the central Finger Lakes or the Eastern Finger Lakes. Uh, the detail that you'll see when you zoom in are, are there are four types or three types of things. You'll see these gray rectangles and these, these uh, show you the coverage of our 66 maps. And each of, each of our maps has a name. This is I1. Right. Roger, can I interrupt you for one second to, yes. to ask if you can make your map like your full screen so it's a little bit easier for folks to see? Like, can you click the enlarge button on your browser window so that's majority? Well, let me see. Um, I can certainly uh, enlarge this. But I think I'm only sharing a part of it. Let me, I'm not sharing my entire screen is the problem. Let me go back and see Actually, if I- Actually, yes, you are sharing your entire screen, Roger. Oh, so you see this uh, part? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, we uh -huh. do. Oh, my, my little- uh, <laughs> uh, little sheet. notes there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start over then. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, sorry for the interruption, but hopefully this will- Oh, no, <laughs> thanks, Christy. I really Okay, bands, a portion of the screen, share. There so now, we go. Now I think I'm showing just, oh, well, that I was sure I had that. All right, thanks, thanks for interrupting. I really appreciate it. No problem. Okay, um, we call this I-1 because it's the interlocan trail that goes through the Finger Lakes National Forest. Um, this map we call M16. It's a part of our main trail that goes from the Allegheny State Park to the Catskills. Uh, it takes 34 maps to get across that distance. And this is the 16th of those maps. So they, they're named M1 through M34. We have some bra other branch trails. We have the Conservation Trail. I think that's C, C, CT1 through CT12 and so on with the Bristol Hills Trail and the Letchworth Trail and the Crystal Hills Trail. So knowing the, the names of these maps is, uh, is useful. And this shows you the coverage of the paper version of the map. So you can, you'll, you'll know what to expect if you do want to have a paper version. Okay, so in addition to the map coverage rectangles, we also have tracks. And of course, that's what you're really quite interested in. This is a, a white track here of the main trail um, that goes the span of M16. Over here is the Finger Lakes Trail that goes across M14. And uh, when you, uh, hover on one of these tracks, it will tell you the length of that track. And it will also give you a brief description that this is white, white blazes. So the color of these tracks corresponds to the color that you'll see on the, the uh, blazes on the trees and uh, on the signs and uh, so forth. The so we have the map outlines and we have the tracks. Uh, uh, 
we also have then symbols and that's what most of this interesting clutter is, is are the symbols. Uh, the most common symbol is um, arguably the uh, uh, parking symbol. Uh, here, here's an example here. This is a parking symbol. It's on Comfort Road with the junction of the trail. It has a, a useful comment on it, uh, wide shoulder parking, but do not block the entrance to the field. That's an important thing for maintaining our friendship with the landowner who's volunteered to let us uh, hike on his property, her property. So that's uh, uh, important information that you'll find on many of these symbols. Uh, you also have the latitude and longitude here. That's something you can paste into an email to send to a friend. You can also uh, key it into the navigation system in your car. Uh, in the case of parking symbols, you can also simply put your address in here and say go. And it will take you right to uh, Google Maps and show you how to get from wherever you are. This is my home. Uh, to that trailhead, that parking location. When you're finished with the Google, uh, simply close that window and you'll be back on our map. So that's the uh, uh, parking. We do have a few no parking symbols. Uh, these tend to be uh, really important. <laughs> We have had a few landowners who've had trouble with people uh, insensitive parking. <laughs> so a few landowners have said, ask people not to park in front of my house and certainly ask them not to park in my driveway. <laughs> so um, knowing the parking uh, availability and also then the, the, the rules involving those is really an important part of your, your hiking responsibility. So. Uh, check out the parking. Another extremely important uh, symbol are these red flags, and they are generally accompanied by a red outline on that section of the trail. And that says that this section of the trail is closed. So don't hike there. <laughs> um, we have these uh, uh, pale red tracks that show you how to get around that closure. Most of those closures are for hunting. So the land, it's private land, and the hunter has said, uh, uh, no hiking, please, during hunting season. So that could involve most of May, and then most of October through um, mid-January in some places. So, Make sure when you're hiking, particularly during hunting seasons, that you're sensitive to these uh, closures. If it's not during hunting season, you can use this link and hide the closures. <clears throat> but if you're planning on hiking uh, during hunting season, uh, please pay close attention to those. My cheat sheet is now too small, so <laughs> let me fix that. Okay. We have other symbols, uh, for example, uh, camping. This is a lean-to. We also use the same symbol for the tent uh, bivouacs of the primitive campsites. Uh, this is my favorite lean-to. Um, it has a fire ring, table, benches, scenic privy, actually voted the most scenic privy on the Finger Lakes Trail. Um, and it also has a solar powered phone charger um, that was built by a, an Eagle Scout uh, candidate, but it has no water. So these, this is the kind of information that's readily available uh, for those of you who are, are backpacking. Uh, we also identify places where you can find water. That symbol says it's uh, potable water. 
Uh, we have another symbol that says water needing treatment. So that's an important thing to make sure that you're drinking trusted water from a municipal source or water that you, you have treated yourself. The final, uh, so there's lots of other, I mean, these are viewpoints. Uh, we have uh, other, other kinds of symbols on here that you can discover. An important one is this symbol here that not only has the map name, but it has a, a, a link to further information about that particular map. So um, this page is the, uh, the detail that you'll find on uh, M16. Uh, this is an important uh, piece of information. When was that map last revised? So if you've got an older version of that map, you might want to consider getting an updated version. We list uh, the public lands that host the trail uh, and links to their, their websites. We list place names. Uh, if there's any uh, uh, special hikes and attractions, we list those. Many of these are part of our passport program where you can uh, uh, take uh, five or 10 uh, suggested uh, easy introductory hikes. I mean, really focused on folks uh, uh, just getting into uh, hiking uh, can uh, be comfortable on these passport hikes. And if you do five or 10 of them, you get a certificate and I'm not sure what else. <laughs> and then these are the adjacent maps. And most important, uh, if you're on this page anyway, you can actually purchase the map, choose the paper version or the digital version more on that later, and simply say add to cart. And that will put it in your shopping cart, which is up here. So I now have that map in my cart. Uh, I'm not logged in as a member, so it uh, I'm paying the full price. But if I were logged in as a member, I would get the member price, which is, uh, I think, a 20% discount. $2.40. Uh, we also have an elevation profile for that map. So this is the length of it, 20 miles. This is the vertical dimension, uh, roughly, what, 1,700 feet uh, for the... So, M16 is, does have some up and down. It's, it's not this steep, obviously, because this, the, the vertical scale is so graduate, uh, uh, different, but it does have some, some nice ups and downs. So uh, map outlines, tracks, and symbols. I think that's... Uh, uh, pretty good understanding of what we have. There is one symbol that is normally hidden. The others you can control yourself. So if you want to see just the camping symbols, you could uh, do something like that. But there's another symbol called tick marks that we uh, uh, leave uh, hidden by default, but you can enable them by simply clicking on, on that, that choice there. The tick marks show half mile intervals along the trail. So if you wanna hike from here to here and can do some simple mathematics, uh, you can figure just exactly how long your hike is. So that, uh, the tick marks are kind of handy. There's a few other features on here and I'll mention them. This menu, Uh, allows you to change the background of the map. So I just picked Google Hybrid, which is the satellite view. And this lets you zoom in and uh, really see what's going on at the, at the helicopter level. Um, so you can see whether you're in the woods or on the road or in the fields and so on. So that's a, a handy view to have. Another view that people use uh, 
frequently is the uh, USGS topo map. So that one, if you enjoy using uh, contour lines, uh, you can see where you're going to be huffing and puffing and where you're going to be cruising. So that's the, uh, the map background. I'll put it back to our default, which is Google Terrain. Uh, you can also change the opacity of that. So I, I can make it, if, if, if the background is uh, distracting to you, you can reduce the, the uh, density of it. And we also have this little button called show your current position. This is not very useful now because I know that I'm at home. <laughs> um, but if you're in the field and do have an, an internet connection, or if you have this map on your phone before you left home, you'll be able to see where you are in the field by clicking this little button. This, is, this little blue button is the same. What am I missing? We have a find box down here. If I want to find the uh, Bach Harvey, I should spell it correctly. Mr. Harvey would not have been happy with that. It'll take me right there. And there's the Finger Lakes Trail, there's the Locust Lean To, and so on. So that's. Um, and you can put it, in, this is actually part of Google. So anything you can search on Google Maps, you can also search here on our maps. Uh, so an address, or you can put in a latitude, longitude, or a description of some sort. <clears throat> well, we also have this street view. <laughs> this may, uh, this has some limitations, but it's kind of kind of fun. I click on I, I click on that little symbol and then drag it to something that's been colored blue. So if I get it right here, I can see. So this is where the Finger Lakes Trail enters the um, Stevenson Preserve of the Finger Lakes Land Trust. So there's our sign. And there's their sign, and then here's the parking lot. So that's kind of nice if you're going to a trailhead you're not familiar with to just get a preview of what it'll look like when you get there. Uh, and I, enjoy, I I love the street view for just kind of crawling around. It's kind of fun. So to exit from the pre uh, street view, you've got to click on this little arrow here, and then you're back on the map. So I do want to spend just a moment on trail conditions. I said that was the other leg that uh, your safety and enjoyment are standing on. Um, and let me get back to the map where I can find the, uh, oops, I've hidden all my other symbols. I can't see those. Okay, I wanted to find the, I can get to the trail condition notices for this map by clicking this button. And that will take me to the, uh, this no, and this is a, a very timely notice. This was put on yesterday. It's actually been there for almost a year because the bridge was unsafe. And then within the last week or so, it completely collapsed. Um, so that's, uh, that's what you'll see if you if you go to this map. Uh, there is a way to get to the other notices, but maybe Scott can help me with that. Yeah, we don't have that linked up right now for, for okay. those. So you, you have to go to the main uh, trail conditions page. Okay, good enough. Um, so the, the trail conditions will have the full information on all of these. So uh, for example, a hunting enclosure will go to that particular hunting closure um, and so on. We do have a few conditions and, and all of these other symbols uh, really are in the current version of our maps. And anytime we update any of our maps, 
this this entire interactive mapping system plus all of the maps that we sell in the store are updated at the same time. So anytime you buy a map, you're getting the most ver current version of that map. But there are some conditions that uh, are temporary in nature, and this, this happened to be one of them. We weren't sure when that was going to be corrected, so we did not update the map. Um, but we had this, uh, this symbol on the map to alert you to uh, something that was uh, not otherwise covered on the maps. That, that gets used mostly for uh, reroutes where we, we need to change where the trail goes. And that can take time. I mean, it can take, uh, certainly can take several days. It can also take several weeks. It may involve negotiations with landowners. And so during the time where that process is, uh, is happening, you'll see a, a symbol that looks like this on the interactive map. And a final uh, business uh, topic, uh, let's get back and talk about how to uh, uh, purchase maps, because I know you're also all waiting for that. Um, I'm going to go back to the website and go to shop the store, maps and GPS. And this page explains all of the the basic principles, the difference between individual maps and map sets, and then the difference between paper maps and digital download maps. So if you want a, uh, a, a map set, you're buying a, a, a number of maps, uh, this is the place to go, choose between digital and paper, and then you'll see uh, a list of the available sets. This, this one has three different maps and this has four, this one has 12. Um, you can also go, my back button is hidden. You can also go to individual maps and we have an index map that shows you, again, the entire system, but in a uh, simplified form. So no, no symbols, no spurs and loops, just the maps. And so if I want to get a map, I simply click on the map I want. Whoops. I'll get M17 add to the cart. So that's now in my cart and my cart now has two maps in it. I select a digital download. So when I do check out and, uh, and pay on, uh, on PayPal or with a credit card, um, I will get a, uh, an email with a, uh, with links to these downloads, and I can then download the, that file. That file will contain two versions of the map. One is the PDF version, which is the same as the paper map. So it has the, uh, the, the, the map itself on page one, and then page two, the back of that page, is a step-by-step -step, uh, narrative for hiking on that map. So it'll tell you, for example, at mile 3.4, there's a, 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 a drinking fountain. <laughs> at uh, mile six, there's a nice view to the west. And mile eight has got the uh, Bach Harvey uh, lean-to with its uh, cell phone charger. So you'll get that email with those links in it. Download that file. It's a zip file, so then if you open it in your operating system, you'll see that it's got uh, two files in there, and then you can open those files separately. The PDF, you can, you're welcome to print yourself. It won't be as, ni as nice a map as you get if you buy a paper map from us, because that will come on waterproof paper with archival links, but you're welcome to uh, print your own copy on your own printer. Um, the other file will be a GPX file. GPX stands for Geoposition Exchange Format. 
and you can load that into your smartphone, as you'll, you'll learn soon with, uh, with Scott. You can also load the PDF file into your smartphone and, uh, and use, it, use them there. So that's uh, what I have to say about using the interactive map, the trail condition notices, and uh, the store to purchase your own maps. I, I will emphasize what uh, Christy said, is that all of our map maps are produced by volunteers. And we've got a number of, of volunteers, uh, and including the, the our team members, but also a lot of people in the field who are telling us when things change uh, through the trail reports. Uh, and that's an important part of our mapping. And, uh, and we sell them on the store and 100% and of that revenue goes to the operating fund of the Finger Lakes Trail Conference. So we don't have to pay any, any other fees on that. We get the whole, your, your, your dollars go directly into running the organization buying the equipment and supplies we need to build and maintain the trail. So it's a worthwhile purchase, both for us and for you to hike safe and safely and, uh, and enjoyably. So Scott, what can we do on our, on our portable devices? All right, thanks Roger. Stop sharing. All right, so I'm going to pick up kind of where Roger left off. Uh, he ta was talking about purchasing a map, and I'm going to run through and show you purchasing the map and a, and a few quick things there. And then I'm going to uh, show you my cell phone, and, and I'm actually going to stream it uh, to the screen here and actually use a product called Avenza Maps. Uh, and we'll talk about that in, in just a moment. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, and so we're on the Finger Lakes Trail. You've seen that uh, before, shop the store. Roger talked about the maps, GPS, map sets, and individual. We can also, we have another link here called individual map product pages. And so if you know exactly what map and you wanna go right to it, it's a listing of all of the maps and it's just a page listing uh, and you can navigate through and jump to different pages and find the map that you want. So for example, uh, maybe we want to do M18 here, which is the Shindigan Hollow area. So I can go ahead and click on that. And you can see here I'm logged in. So I am seeing that member discount Roger was talking about. Uh, three is the regular rate, 240 is the discounted rate. It shows all the information Roger previously mentioned. And I can just go ahead and click add to cart. And if it's the only map I want, I can go right into my cart. And oh, I already added it in. I forgot about that. Or actually, no, I had M16 in there. Well, we'll leave M16. I was I was experimenting before our session here just to make sure it all worked. Um, and so then you would go through the checkout. Now I set up a, a special coupon code to kind of bypass uh, having to purchase it. It's just gonna give me a hundred percent discount. Sorry, I can't give that one out. This is a one-time use only um, just for this session. Um, but it's to speed up the process here of showing you what happens when you purchase it. So I've got all my information in here uh, because I'm already a member and I've put my address in. I'm using, of course, uh, the uh, visitor center uh, in Mount Morris as my address. Uh, and it shows me the details. I can say, yep, I've read the agreements and I go ahead and place my order. And in a second, here we go, this is my receipt. Now, if you were paying by PayPal, it would redirect you to PayPal, you'd pay there, you come back. If you were paying by credit card, you would enter in your credit card information. It goes through a service called Stripe. Fing the Finger Lakes Trail does not store, record, keep any of your credit card information. That is all by a third party uh, certified vendor. They have to meet certain requirements called PCI DSS, which is a whole technical thing, but basically means they have to report to the credit card industry certain security levels. And it's a fairly lengthy, costly, rigorous procedure. We as an organization don't want to have to deal with that, nor should we have to deal with that. So your credit cards are safe with, with Stripe. We do not store them anywhere at any time. Okay, so now that I've made the order, I've got my order number, 
Uh, and it does show me a link. I can click download here. But if for some reason you don't see this page, like Roger said, you'll get an email with the link also. And you can also go into your account and go into either orders or downloads. And in your downloads, it's going to show you what you have available. And so it's showing me there's a limit. I can download it five times and it expires. So you have a certain limited number of times you can download it, limited number of, uh, or limited time period to download it in. Um, when you download it, as Roger said, it is a zip file. And so where you're downloading it, you have to be able to extract or uncompress it. There are some links on the website uh, instructing on how to do that. Um, but you do need to have some tool that will extract it. Why do we do it this way? As Roger said, there's two files. There's actually a third uh, PDF file that is some informational, but there's two main files. There is the, the PDF that you can print and that we're gonna use in events, I'll show you in a moment. And there's the GPX file, which you can use in uh, various mobile apps or GPS devices. And so in order to give you both of those files, we wanna bundle them up into a single file that you can just download one file rather than having to download multiple files. It speeds things up. And especially when we get into the map sets where Roger is showing there's three, four, nine, 12 different maps, um, having to download each one individually would be pretty tedious. So this is a, a means to let us deliver it to you in a compressed, combined, consolidated format, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so now I've got my zip file. It's probably on my computer, but maybe I put it on my phone, but let's, let's go with the, the idea that it's on my computer. I unzip it, I have my files. Now I wanna get it to my, um, my... There's different ways you can do that. Uh, you can connect your phone directly to your computer through a USB cord and transfer files that way. You can use a cloud service such as Dropbox, Box, P cloud, um, iCloud, whatever, you know, whatever service you have, you can transfer it that way as well. But you want to get those files or at least the PDF file for what we're going to talk about uh, with Avenza to your phone. And so with that, what I'm going to do is start up a screen share on my phone. And I'm going to switch over to that. And here we go. Good. Okay. So this is my phone. This is live. Um, and I have a screen here and right in the middle there is the Avenza Maps app. And you can search for that in the Google Play Store and the uh, Apple Store. Um, and you'll find it in both for both iPhone and Android. Um, and what it allows you to do is take those PDFs, not the GPX. The GPX is a different file, but it will let you take those PDFs and it will let you use them and view them. And, and it actually will show you where you are on the map when you're hiking. Uh, and it's, it's invaluable if you happen to lose the blazes. Uh, and I've done this actually a couple of times. I finished, whoops, sorry. I finished um, my ETE, my end to end in 2019. I started in 2010, but finished in 2019. Uh, section hiked it over, you know, once a month over, uh, over the 10 years. And I found myself, occasionally I would lose the blazes, usually from my own fault because I was daydreaming and not paying attention. And so using Avenza helped you find, oh yeah, I got to backtrack a quarter mile, I got to turn here. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of show that here. Um, but we go ahead and, and we start it up. And what you're seeing here on the screen, you see three maps in here, and these are not FLT maps. These are Catskills maps. I have been using Avenza because I'm working on my Catskills 3500. And so, in fact, I was down in the Catskills this past weekend. The, our kind of our, one of our sister organizations, the New York, New Jersey uh, Trail Conference uh, is the one that maintains these maps and they make them available through Avenza exclusively. You cannot buy it on their website. You can only buy it through Avenza. Uh, and so they make their maps available, but we can do the same thing and in fact, the Finger Lakes Trail, we actually have worked uh, worked with or are working with Avenza and you can purchase the maps through the Avenza store. I'll show that in just a moment, but I'm gonna start with, if you purchase it on our store on the fingerlakestrail.org website, how do you deal with that? So you'll see that orange plus in the lower right. If you click that, you get download or import a map and that's really what we wanna do. 
And now you get a bunch of choices. You can get a map from the store, you can request a map, uh, and that's telling a Venza map you'd like to see. So it doesn't exist, but hey, you wish it would. They have Dropbox already associated. So if you are using Dropbox, you've got a button right there that you can click into. If you aren't using Dropbox, that's okay. The next one, cloud storage or device, gives you the ability to pick something else. And that's the one I'm gonna use. And what it opens up is this kind of uh, screen here. Yours might look a little bit different, but this screen across the top that I'm scrolling back and forth is my apps. Uh, and you can see a bunch of apps in here, uh, like Drive, Google Drive. Uh, you can see My Files, OneDrive, PCloud, uh, Photos, and so on. And so what you want to do is find your, you have to have your cloud service installed and you would find it. So I use one called PCloud. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And it's just a file list. Uh, and I happen to have it, I put it right here at the top, M18. And this is the extracted zip file. And so there are three files, as I said, there's the PDF, the GPX, and then there's this important notices PDF. Uh, and that's one for you to read. It gives some information about uh, the trail and hiking safely and trail conditions and so on. Uh, so if you've never read it before, take a quick look at it, make sure you read it. It's the same in all of the maps, uh, but be sure to check it out if you've never seen it before. For Avenza though, what we care about is the PDF because Avenza uses PDF. So I'm gonna click on M18 PDF and you can see it's very quickly loading it in. Uh, and what it does is it tiles it real quick. It tells me uh, a bunch of information. And one of the pieces there is how far away from the trail I am. Now, if I'm on the map, it will say on map. Right now I'm 21.03 miles away because um, obviously I'm sitting at my home in Binghamton, not in the middle of the trail. Uh, I do have a quick recording of actually being on the trail, and I'll show that if we have enough time here at the end, but I wanted to go through this part first. But even if I'm not on the trail, I can actually click into it, and you can see this is our PDF. This is the what it would be if you opened up the PDF in, in Adobe Acrobat PDF Reader, uh, or uh, you bought a printed map. This is what you would see. Granted, it's you know kind of a small screen here, uh, but you can pinch and zoom, pinch and pull to zoom in, zoom in and out uh, and move your mouse or move your finger around dragging to see the trail. And so here's our trail. We can turn it if we want to and you can move it all around and find where you are. And so this is, if I were on the trail, I, I could pinpoint it, it would show me where I'm at and I can then see, I can zoom in and see exactly, oh, okay. You know, I, I need to turn here. And so we can see here, here's the lean to, the Kimmy lean to. We've got a RS, which is a reliable stream. The key is up here at the top. And so it gives you information. Um, and so this is the Avenza interface. Now you can also purchase FLT maps through the Avenza store. They cost more than if you purchase them on the website. But the advantage is you don't have to do this file transfer. You don't have to unzip. You don't have to, have to deal with any of that. Um, so I can go into my store here and I can search for hopefully FLT will work. And there we go. Um, I could search for other keywords, uh, but you can see here's M17, Ithaca Danby, and you can see they are twice as much as the non-member price. Uh, and the reason for that is because Avenza takes a markup on it. Um, so it's going to be more. There's no choice. There's no way around that. Um, but if it's valuable enough to you that you don't want to have to fiddle with the inconvenience of having to move stuff back and forth. This is an alternate option and it will load them right into the app for you. Another advantage of doing the purchased maps, I'm using the free version of Avenza and the free version only allows you to upload three, this thing download or import, it only lets you put in three maps. After that, it will tell you you can't add any more until you delete some. Now you see I have four in here right now. 
uh, that's because the Catskill ones are purchased ones. The purchased ones don't go towards that count. It's just the imported ones that go to the count. Uh, so that's another way if you purchase them directly through the Venza store, you don't have to deal with that count. But it's actually not a real big deal. Once you're done with the map, you can just simply click the three dots, select delete, and it will remove it. And then you can go and add your next map from wherever you want to add it in. So what I'd like to do right now is, uh, like I said, I have a video that I created using Avenza uh, showing a little bit more about the app. Now, one thing to note, the Avenza app just recently within the past week or two updated. And so some of the icons and look is a little bit different than my recording. I recorded this a couple of years ago. I did not get a chance to update it, uh, the recording since they've updated their app. But it's just some of the, the icons are a little bit different. Uh, one of those being this icon down here with that's in the lower left that looks like the little arrow. It's a different icon. Same, it works the same. You'll see when I do the show the video here. So I'm going to show it. It's about seven, eight minutes. Uh, and then that should wrap us up and get us pretty close to eight o'clock. Okay, so I'm out here on Black Road on map M19, and I've opened up Avenza Maps so that I can use the uh, FLT map to navigate. Now, what you're seeing here is the home screen, and I've got two of the FLT maps, M18 and M19, which I've imported, and I also have uh, Catskill maps 142 and 143 and those two maps are purchased maps they come from the New York New Jersey trail conference. I am using the Avenza maps free version and with the free version you can import or upload up to three maps right now I have two M18 and M19 the paid ones 142 and 143 don't count towards that limit. Now you can see here. Uh, M19 says I'm on the map. M18 says I'm 5.4 miles away from it. And then, of course, the 142, 143, I'm quite a bit further because that, of course, is in the Catskills. So what I'm going to do is open up M19. And it opens up the PDF, the, what comes in the zip file that you download along with the GPX. And it's expand it out and I can move around and I can pinch and pull to zoom in and I can turn it and, and uh, take a look at all sorts of different things. Um, we can see the key up here at the top. So the parking, trail register, uh, water, potable, uh, reliable running stream or spring and so on and so forth. Down in the bottom, uh, a bullseye target. And if I click on that, what that will do is center me on my location. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And we can see right there, the blue dot is where I'm at. And I'm going to pull to uh, zoom in so I can see where I'm at. And I can see nearby, uh, we've got the P, which is parking. We've got R, which is register. There is also a, uh, a binoculars icon, which means a view, and we can see some other trails. We see an orange trail, we see a blue trail, we also see an RS for reliable stream um, on both sides of the parking area, and we also see a shelter or a lean-to, uh, and that happens to be the Foxfire lean-to. -to. Uh, and you can also see on the blue dot there is an arrow, and that is the direction I am facing currently. So I I'm put the coffee on, didn't I? Get myself moving here, and we'll go ahead huh? and see how this navigation okay. works. Okay, so I'm starting down the trail, and you can see uh, the arrow pointing the direction I'm heading. And so, so I'll go ahead and walk for a little bit here, uh, and I'm going to pause the recording and then come back to it in just a little bit. Okay, so I've been hiking for a little while here and I've made it to the orange loop, the Davies Diversion. Uh, and you can see right now I'm facing the direction of the lean to. And so if I wanted to take the diversion, I could certainly go ahead and do that. And we'll go ahead and walk a little bit here so you can see how it works. And now I'm turning on to the orange trail. And you can see the pointer arrow is pointing the direction I'm going. And the blue dot continues to track me as I continue on up the orange trail. 
a little ways. And I'll go for just a little bit here so you get the, the idea of how this works. And so I'm going to continue on. And that's probably far enough. I think you can see here how that works. And I've moved up the orange trail just a little ways. So I can turn around and head back and you see the blue pointer arrow heads back in the other direction. So we'll go ahead and continue walking along. It's a little breezy today here, so probably a fair amount of wind noise on this. And now I'm back to the intersection and I can go ahead and turn onto the main trail and continue following along and head down if I wanted to down to the lean to. But I'm going to stop here because I think you've gotten the idea of how the map works and how you can navigate in it. So it was a bit windy that day and it was hard to hear. So I'm doing a separate audio recording here. Now there's some points of interest on the map. So we've got the tent B, which is our bivouac. We've got an S for a shelter or a lean to, RS for reliable stream, P for parking, R for register. We've got a number of different trails, orange, blue, the black, which is the main trail. And then there's a pair of binoculars which indicate a scenic view. And so you can see where you are, the blue dot, in relationship to all of these, and it will help you navigate. Along the bottom, we have a number of other items. We have the bullseye, which will center the map on your current location, the blue dot. We have a pin, which will allow you to drop a pin in a particular location and record the GPS coordinates. In the center are our current GPS coordinates. And to the right of that, the pin with the three lines lets you access previously saved pins, tracks, or routes. And then on the far right, there are three vertical dots which open up additional features. And so the additional features give you things such as draw and measure, record GPS tracks, navigate to a destination, uh, and so on. Now, if I swipe up on the horizontal gray bar, it will give me access to some even more information. And I'll have access to a compass. It, when I swipe up, it records the coordinates to my clipboard. You can see speed, altitude, horizontal, and vertical accuracy as well. And if I start walking, you'll see my speed here will start to increase and I can hold my compass relatively flat. Now it's gonna bounce around a little bit because I'm walking. If I wanted to get a more accurate compass reading, I really would need to stop walking and put my compass or my phone on a flat surface. And of course you do also need to make sure that you do calibrate the compass in your phone before trying to use it. It's not 100% accurate. It's not like a manual compass. Uh, because it is electronic. There are some other items that I can do, uh, tabs I can do along here. So there's the tracking tab, and that allows us to record a track. And then we have our navigation tab, which allows us to do things such as project a destination, navigate to a feature, enter coordinates, or create a route. So I'm going to flip back to tracking, and I'm actually going to start tracking. I'll click the green button here and you should see now it says pause tracking and stop tracking i've got some speed i've got distance average speed and duration and you can see the compass is pointing the direction i'm going and so i'm going to record this head back to my car and then we'll see what happens when we get there okay so i have made it back now to the parking area and to my car and you can see on events that the tracking created a little orange line that follows along i can whoops get back to the center. And you can see here, I've gone 0.31 miles. My average speed was 2.6 and the duration was seven minutes and 15 seconds. I can expand it a little bit further and see the rest of the recording. And I'll go ahead and stop tracking. And so now my track is done and you can see it there on the map. I can tap on the pin with the three lines to see my track layer and it will show me all my tracks. I can tap on the track one and it shows it to me on the map with some details. I can tap on those details and I can rename it, change the color, show a graph. I can move it to a folder. I can delete it. I can also swipe down on my status bar and it will allow me to navigate back along the route that I just recorded so I can backtrack, so to speak. 
So Events of Maps has a lot of different tools in it to help us navigate along the Finger Lakes Trail. It can help us make sure that we're on the trail and if we get off the trail, we can get back onto it. And we can also see various points of interest that are important, such as shelters and bivouacs or reliable streams, parking and registers. So you can take the digital maps that you purchased from the FLT site and load them here into Events of Maps and start using them today to navigate along the Finger Lakes Trail. Okay, so hopefully that uh, video was informative for everyone and, and I know we're just a, a minute over eight o'clock here so I'm going to wrap up my presentation. I know there were some questions uh, in the chat and Christy, if you don't mind, I can, you know, hit a few of those real quick. Yeah, go for it. All right, so let me scroll back. I know I did see one that was a closure question. Uh, do the closers change by seasons? And, and the answer to that is yes, they can, uh, which is why looking at the interactive map and uh, the, the trail conditions is so critically important. Closures are not just for hunting, although most of them are, but we do have other closures. Um, and, and paying attention to signs also while you're out hiking, most of the times, the landowners are going to post something because they don't want someone running into problems on their land, obviously. Um, so pay attention to signs. If you see a sign that says trail closed, don't ignore it. Uh, turn around, go back. Doesn't matter how much of a hike you've got planned. Uh, it's not worth uh, the risk to yourself and to the FLT to continue on. Uh, what's the name of that app that navigates with PDFs? That's Avenza, A-V-E-N-Z-A. -E and Roger put a, a link to their website right in the chat. And it is a free, it is free, although it does limit you to three. Um, I made PDFs of maps, will it work? No. Uh, the PDFs that work in Avenza are special ones and they have uh, GPS coordinates associated with the PDF. They're geolocated PDFs. Uh, so just uploading a regular PDF is not going to work, um, but you can actually do that. Uh, as I said, I'm here in Binghamton. Uh, Binghamton University has a nature preserve on campus and they have a map. And although they're not geolocated, I have loaded the map just so I can at least look at the map and see, <laughs> see what the map looks like. It doesn't show me where I am doesn't geolocate me or anything like that, but you can at least open it up. Uh, Roger, can you see the back of the PDF in Avenza? No, uh, because it's not geolocated. It will not show you the back. So you could open that same file in a PDF viewer, correct? correct? Correct. And then you would have it in two, uh, two different apps. So you could be reading the, uh, the narrative on the back of the map at the same time you're in the uh, other window. <laughs> looking at the, the map itself. Yep, you got it. Uh, when I go to the App Store and type Avenza, all trails comes up. Not sure about that, Barb. Uh, you don't want all trails. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> all trails is not what you want. Avenza <laughs> um, only works with certain kinds of maps. Can you scan paper maps into PDF and then use an Avenza? Uh, Debbie asked that. No, unfortunately, no, you can't. Uh, again, it's, it requires that geolocated PDF uh, to be able to work. So they're special PDFs uh, that, that only work in Avenza. I think I got all the questions if I missed I think any. you did. That was impressive. <laughs> you can tell I'm a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> On top of it. One, one of my many hats. <laughs> Well, thank you both for being here and for everything again. And uh, thank everybody for being here and for your support of the FLT and for taking the steps to learn how to use our map tools. It really is important that you use the FLT maps and educate yourself on how to be a, a, you know, a, a responsible hiker. Um, you know, the trail conditions, trail reports, all those stuff is also important. So we thank you for coming here to learn more tonight. Thank you, everybody. With that, we'll, we'll just say good night. And I'll stop recording. All right. Have a good